Hello, this is Nancy Reynolds, Stampin' with Nutsy, and I am here for the November 4th Share Fair. I'm so glad you're here. I would um, hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'm going to just put you right down to the desk because I want to show you what I'm working on. I have a card using the Soft Ceiling Stamp Set. I use the So Grateful For You Cinnamon Stamps and both of the image stamps. The little for the gig stamp, which is a seedling right for a maple tree, and then the maple leaf. This is such a beautiful set, but it is just a stamp set. There's no dies. It's not a bundle, not a suite, no designer series paper, and I am feeling very fallish, as you can tell by my shirt. See, very fallish today. So I thought I would make my own designer series paper. Oh, you might see that there's a little sparkle in there, Somebody might have been playing with their Wink of Stella pen because, let's face it, everything is better with Wink of Stella and some sparkle. I'll just set that aside for now. But the first thing we need to do is we need to make our designer series paper. So I have got some ink pads out. This is Cajun Craze, Soft Suede, Pumpkin Pie, Old Olive, and Cherry Cobbler. And I've got a little dauber. For, to match each one of them. Keep my little daubers in a case, which is very cute. It's also somewhat organized, and I use my label maker to label them with the color, because I don't think I could tell all the colors without a little bit of help. Uh, we are going to stamp on very vanilla cardstock. Let's see. Well, I can get most of it in. I'm using, to begin with, I'm going to use the large maple leaf with the seed pods on it. And it seems to me like I was just feeling like color is important. And I was having fun with color. So I do want to tell you one thing about when you're using the um, Wink of Stella pens, it will cause the ink to bleed on some colors, not on all colors. So the Cherry Cobbler and I believe the Cajun Craze really kind of bled when I when I put on the Wink of Stella. So just keep that in mind. If you don't like that look, skip the Wink of Stella step. And I know I'm supposed to keep this in the set, but I really don't want to get more color on it. So I am going to set it to the side while we do our designer series paper. So I'm going to start with, well, some leaves are green, right? So I'm going to start over here. Actually, works better this way. This is a distinctive stamp. So you tap, tap, tap. It's going to be light in spots. That is just the way it is, and it actually adds a lot to the beauty of the project. I'm taking my soft suede dauber, putting it on my finger, and I'm going to go over the stems and the seed pods with soft suede so that that's what we see. I'm going to go over them a couple times. So this is going to be my green leaf, but you know this time of year, not all leaves are green all the time, so I think I'm going to take some Cajun Craze and go over the top to just kind of dab some edges with Cajun Craze so we get a little bit of different color in here. And now let's see what it does. Oh, you know what I should have done? Is I probably should have huffed on it just to make sure that all of the inks were still active and had enough uh, moisture on them. Worked out okay, but what I would have done is put on my inks and then went <sighs> so that the moist breath would have kept them really moist, my warm breath. Okay, this is the one time where you really do need to clean your stamp between stampings because we're using all kinds of different colors. I think I'm going with Cherry Cobbler next. I'm going to do that with my soft suede again. 
You want to be careful with colors because you don't want to make mud, except I kind of want to make mud on the seedlings, the seed pods, because I do want them brown. Although green would have been okay. So I think we're just going to do a plain cherry cobbler one. Let's hop on it and put it here. I'm just kind of doing this randomly, seeing how the stamp is going to fit in on the paper. There we are. Let's see, what's next? Wash the stamp. And this is going to make four cards. Ooh, pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. Actually, I love the color pumpkin pie. I also love pumpkin pie. When I was growing up this time of year, mom would make pumpkin pies and she would always, because I'm not a crust eater, I will eat it now. I wouldn't eat it as a kid. And so she would always put some in a pudding bowl, some of the pumpkin pie filling for me. Which was really very kind of her. But pumpkin pie still, and that was the only pie I would ever eat because it was more of a pumpkin pudding. Shall we take a little Cajun craze on this and darken the edges a little bit? Just a little, just a little bit. And a little breath, <sighs> making sure it's moist. And we will put this one. I'm going to pull this down a little bit up here. Okay, there we are. Ooh, I like that one. Doesn't that look like fall? Okay, wash the stamp. I'm going to say that out loud every single time because otherwise I will forget to wash the stamp and I will be very sorry. Um, let's see. I wonder if we would do, I didn't use this color in the last one, but I was thinking the crushed curry would go really nice with this color scheme. So let's crush, crushed curry some, one of them. Um, let's see. Pumpkin pie or Cajun craze? How about Cajun craze because that one's handy. Just a little around the edges. And maybe this one still has a little green old olive around the center. And this will be very light because this is the lightest part of the stamp right in there. And then soft suede for our seats. Little seed pods or play the gigs because that's what we called them when I was growing up. Okay, here we go. Let's take a breath and see how crushed curry looks. Mm, how about like that? Now, one of the things I'm going to do is there will be some spaces. Oh, I like that. There will be some spaces that I'm going to fill in with crushed, no, soft suede and the other seed pod. And let's do a couple of them now. There's no direction to this. There it is. We'll put one in here. I think there's not enough room for one in there. So we will skip that. Put this here so that they just kind of look like they're falling through. Now let's try another, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just building my way out to cover the cardstock. Now this cardstock, it's a full sheet of cardstock. So we are of course going to cut some off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half 
and then cut it in half again so I've got four pieces and then I'm going to decide how I want to trim it. I think we're ready for another cherry cobbler. I will say that my cherry cobbler pad is having some issues. I, I believe it's time that I replace it. Sometimes the reds are that way. Okay, a little soft suede. I probably could have used early espresso. I'm going to use early espresso for my sentiments. And as an accent color, and I didn't want the, the center to be too dark, my focal stamping piece. And I think that will do it. Let's put this over here. Now, before I do that, I'm going to take another piece of paper because I'm trying to keep this grid paper, the full sheet, clean because I might be stamping off. And here we go. I'm so sorry. My phone is going. I forgot to put it on Do Not Disturb. I apologize. And here we go. So you get the idea of what I'm doing. I don't think I'm going to finish this full piece because I've got, I want to make a card for you. But let's do one more. Um, pumpkin pie? No. Maybe another green one. Old olive. Here we are, a little old olive. And do we want a little something? No, I don't think we'll, I think we're just gonna do it just like this. Let's put this one in here. First a half. Move my stamping off sheet in case I make a mess over to here. And there we have another old olive leaf. And so you can just keep playing like this and build it out, fill in where you can with the larger separate seed pod. And then, well, maybe I should finish because I want to show you how I cut this. Um, Cajun craze. Shall we? A Cajun craze. A little bit of. Got a little carried away with that. My. Stamped a little too hard. I made a little bit of a mess. Let me get a Kleenex, which happens to be handy, and see if I can just, because I don't want to mess up my stamping. I really don't. Make sure I got the excess off those little edges. And we're going to put this one maybe up like this. And you are going to want a little bit of white space. So I'm going to do a couple more of the soft suede seedlings because I think we are about done. So I'm going to show you the card again. Say so we want to have a little bit of white or very vanilla in this case. I think it makes a nice accent. The other card I made, because some will be portrait and some will be landscape, also has a little light at the top. So here we go. I think we'll do a couple more because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to cut it. Oh, that was a Cajun Grace one. I like that. Let's do another one over here. 
something a little different. We'll add a little more color. Mm. How about that? And one more here. As long as I'm playing with Cajun Craze, we'll put a few on. So there we are. We have got our designer series paper created. I am now going to close up all of these ink pads because it's dangerous to have so many ink pads open at once. It's so easy to make a mess. And then I'll bring in my trimmer and we will do a little trimming. I know that my end, I think that's all of them. Oh, one more. And then we're going to put away the daubers. I can always get them out if I need them. And I don't put them in in color families or alphabetical or anything organized like that because it's always fun to have to hunt for things, right? That's I'm going with that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right, here we go. I know that my... Let's see, where's my little sample? It's going to be four by five and a quarter inches or 10 by 14.4 centimeters. So that's my inside piece. It's also going to be my um, piece for the front, which it has already done. So, but let's cut this, because let's see how to decide. <laughs> Boy, I wish this was live. You could help me decide how it's going to go. That would be way more fun than trying to do it on myself. And then I'm just going to cut these, put them together, and cut them at five and a half. So this is a quarter sheet of cardstock. Just cut in half both ways. And now I'm going to decide, I know it's going to be five and a half inches the long way, or five and a quarter inches, or 14.4 centimeters. So five and a quarter. I'm going to take it off this side, leaving a little bit of the unstamped area too helps. You decide where you're going to take it off of. And I'm going to do this. It's going to be five, four inches. And that looks about perfect. So you're taking a quarter inch off basically. So there's one. Okay. Five and a quarter very simple. This one's easy to decide because I'm going to take it off the unstamped areas. And I think as I look at that, that I think I'm going to do landscape for both of those cards. This one, let's make four inches. So I'm going to have to cut away something. I'm either going to cut away the, is that Cajun craze or the green? I think this will cut away less of stamped image. So we'll go with that. And this is five and a quarter. Hmm. I think I'm going to cut this side. So this is something that you don't want to try and do blind, so you can't cut them all at once. Because you can cut through two or three layers of cardstock at one time with our trimmer. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay, there we I've got four more pieces of homemade designer series paper. For my next set of four cards, we're going to finish off the set I started last night. And I do like putting the, the um, crushed curry on here. I'm glad I did that. So I'm going to set those aside, put the trimmer away, and we're going to look at what we've got. We have a piece of Mary Merlot cardstock, five and a half by eight and a half. Scored and folded at four and a quarter. That's 21 by 29.7 centimeters, folded at 10.5 centimeters. Our inside is 
four by five and a quarter inches or 10 by 10.4 centimeters. And that is the very same dimension as our front piece designer series paper. I have one more piece of cardstock. I have an early espresso oh, with a little uh, yellow lab hair in it. Four and an eighth by five and three eighths or 10.3 by 14.7 centimeters. This just gives a little sliver of color to set this off against the Mary Merlot. So you can see the difference. I just think that gives a little more interest than a larger area of just the Mary Merlot. I like it better with the, the extra mat. If you don't, then leave that off. It'll save your cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and start attaching some things. Oh, I need to bring these back. There's one and two. I used my seal for the very vanilla front piece. And we do have a little more stamping to do, so I am just going to get the front put together on this one and then we'll, we'll stamp a little bit. Figure that there's really no direction because leaves fall in all different ways and, and directions. Then I put on a piece of my um, suede, this is really cool, card uh, ribbon by taking and putting a strip of seal on the back and hooking my ribbon into it. Now one of the things I like to use is my silicone mat because I'm going to want to put this down in just a minute. My ribbon scissors are here. I just knocked my iPad over at a very interesting angle. So here we go. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to grab I'm going to grab dimensionals. I'm just going to put this on. And you know the dimensionals, you want to use whoop, all of your dimensionals. What I have noticed is I tend to start my dimensional sheet in the middle, see, and then I work out to the sides, sometimes leaving a few. Let me get those. Here we are. And I just like to, there are probably easier ways to get the backings off. Some use your tip, well, let, I think the arthritis in my thumb is just a little bit more pronounced today. So I am going to do it an easier way. I'm gonna take my take your pick tool because that's why we have them. That one's done. Here we are. Get it started. I just like to lift the edge and then I can use my other hand to pick up. Oh, that one's done. And then I put them in the garbage can because otherwise I have dimensionals all over. My dog is happy to transport them to different rooms of the house. And here we are, we're going to just put this on. Now I don't have to worry about that glue on the back. So we have really come a long ways. So let's take this inside piece. Let's take an envelope. I just brought eight of them over. Since this is going this way, and I really kind of like the cherry cobbler. Even though I know mine has issues, I still really like it. Although, maybe I'll use Cajun Craze this time. Okay, Cajun Craze. Cleaning my stamp because I didn't do it after stamping the last one. And you can pick any color that's in there. Let's see. Once again, my stamping off paper. That looks good. And I'm just going to stamp 
a little bit in the corner. I'm going to do that same thing, only probably stamp a little bit more of it on my envelope. That was awkward, the way I handed that to myself. Okay, there's the envelope. And I kind of like stamping one, and I may just stamp, ink up the whole, and letting it hang over the top. So one on the back, a little one on the front, and then this just kind of hangs over. And I think this is Cajun Craze is one that will spread and I didn't stamp very well. So let's see if I can get a little color in that part of it. There. See, there's some advantages to having ink that will move around. And I'm probably going to have to do this one too. Because if you've got sparkle in one place, don't you think you should have sparkle everywhere? I'm thinking so. It does move the ink. It does kind of mess up a little bit your um, distinctive stamping, but you've still got a variation in color. And to me, the sparkle is worth it. Oh, you can't see me. I'm so sorry. So here we are. And I'm going to finish this envelope up on the back. I might leave the rest of the... And I probably wouldn't do this on the, the envelope unless I hadn't... if I hadn't kind of messed up the stamping a little bit and needed to pull some color in. So there we are. We have some sparkle. That's pretty. And I will just make sure there's no Cajun craze on that. So there we go. There's our envelope. Here's our inside. We're going to take that little stamp that says for you. And I'm going to ink it up with early espresso. Make sure I got the whole stamp. I believe I did. And I'm going to put it right down here in the bottom. There we go. So this is finishing our sentiment that we have not stamped on the front yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pull out the label from the Leaf and the Amber Gems set. And I am going to stamp In early espresso. We'll just ink that up. So grateful. And I'm going to put it across the bottom. Let's move this out of the way. Put it across the bottom of my, my leaf. So grateful. And then on the inside, for you. That's all our stamping. We are just going to do a little bit of assembly. We will place our inside piece to inside the card. There we are. Now, this is where I fussed a little bit because I'm going to tie this on to my card. Before I do that, I'm going to play with my Wink of Stella because it's a lot easier to do the Wink of Stella right now than it would be to do it later. And again, this is the, this is the Cajun craze. I believe so. We will just, with a little bit of the old olive, you'll notice the old olive doesn't move around. It's the Cajun craze that does. I believe this is a little bit of cherry cobbler and it definitely moves. Oh, 
I did try just very carefully daubing this on and it didn't work very well. So I just decided to paint it all on. I guess it doesn't have to be 100% covered, but it does need to have plenty of sparkle. I think my, I use so much Wink of Stella, I actually go through a whole pen of it every once in a while. And I think that is the case, but there we go. We've got Wink of Stella, a little shine. Now we're gonna play with the label that we've stamped. I'm gonna put this under here and cut it. And then I just tied it over towards the side. And I did a, a double knot. Let's see. I think I might want this to go on the other side so that it kind of slants this way. And I realized when I was doing this that I really don't Sometimes I don't like things that can move around. And so I played with my glue dots too. And a small dimensional. And then just a little, a little bow. Nothing fancy. I got one end a little bit small there. So there's our bow. Normally if you tie them upside down, it works better. I did not, but that's okay. Make this a little smaller. So you can play around with it, but do make sure it's pulled tight towards the end because you don't want your bow to come undone. I'm just gonna leave my strings hang. I'm gonna put a small, one of the mini dimensionals I'm going to tuck it up under, let's see, I did not have so much trouble getting that end off last night when I was doing this. Okay, there we are. And I'm going to put this right under here so that this will stay up. And that's really all you need. You don't really need a blue dot under here unless you want to stick down your early espresso. Because this is not going to go anywhere since we've got that one dimensional under there. So here's our card. We could use a few little blingies. So the amber gems are lovely. I think that when I run out of the amber gems, I'm going to use the champagne. And there we are. There's our card. Pretty on the outside. Pretty on the inside. And the envelope is decorated. Front and back. There we are. What do you think? I hope you like it. Here's one I did yesterday. They're all going to look a little bit different because they're cut from a different part of that designer series paper we made. So have a wonderful time. I hope you use this technique. You can use it with any stamp set or most any stamp set, one that you like the um, images of and enjoy. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the share fair. It's always fun for us to be part of your life and to enjoy doing this with you. Um, be sure if there's anything that you find that you wanted to buy that you get with your demonstrator. And all I can say right now is happy stamping until I see you again. Bye-bye.